Hi, my name is Mike McKee. I'm head of installation and production at the Walters Art Museum. Today, I would like to talk to you about sculpture and how we move sculpture in the museum. Sculpture is a three-dimensional object. Sculptures can be made of all kinds of materials. Sculpture can be carved out of wood. It can be chiseled out of stone. A sculpture can be cast in bronze or other materials. Sculpture can be molded in clay and fired. There are only a few different ways we move sculpture. All of that really always depends on the size and the weight of the sculpture. Some sculptures are small, can fit in the palm of your hand, the size of a shoe, easily moved. Other sculpture is a little bit heavier, a little bit larger. Maybe it takes two people to pick it up. These objects can be lifted onto a cart and moved as well. Sculpture larger than that, we often slide from one surface to another. Increase the weight to that of a stone sculpture that is the size of a adult human, you may want to still be able to slide it, but if it gets too much heavier, you use a gantry, block and tackle, chain fall. This is where we get into rigging. Rigging, you would use a specialized strap to, 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 to tighten a basket web around an object and then with the weight, you can lift it from below. Anything over 1,000, 2,000 pounds, you might want to start to consider a forklift. Today, I would like to talk to, to you more about uh, how we slide sculpture from one surface to another using this sliding technique that I'll share with you now. Here's an example of a sculpture that we will slide from one surface to another. This is a portrait of Othello by the Italian sculptor Pietro Calvi. This was made in the late 1800s. It is a life-size sculpture that's made of bronze and marble. It's about 34 inches high, 22 inches wide. It probably weighs 200, 250 pounds, far more than we want to pick up, but it doesn't need a gantry. We can slide this sculpture. Before we move the sculpture, it's always important to examine the piece. We look at the side of the sculpture and we see a line. That line separates the sculpture body from the base, called a sockle. If we turn the sculpture to the back, we have a better idea of where this line goes. <clears throat> With a slight movement, one art handler can move the sculpture a little bit, and we see that that is a well-adhered sockle to the sculpture. So with the one art handler supporting one side, the other art handler can apply a little pressure and just lift one side of the sculpture enough to insert a, a shim and then relax back down. And then we have a clear line. We can see underneath the sculpture just enough to get a padded crowbar in there. And with leverage, pull back on the pro crowbar and then we can insert something we call tie bar. Tie bar is a, a dense plastic material that will allow the sculpture to slide. And that way, when the sculpture is moving, uh, we don't abrade the sculpture or the platform that it's sitting on or the pedestal that it's going to. The shim removed, the tie bar underneath, we can just slide the sculpture onto our lift. The lift um, is adjustable. It's a hydraulic pump. So as you, as you pump the pedal, the, the table can come higher and higher to exactly where we need it. And we slide the sculpture onto the lift table. And then we have a, a, a release brake that we can lower it back down. It's very important to have the weight as low as possible on these carts when you're moving a sculpture from one place to another. The higher the sculpture is, the more tippy it gets. So you want to keep it low 
to where you're going. And when you arrive at the location where the sculpture is going to be reinstalled, you just jack up that, that platform and do the same process in reverse. Slide it onto the pedestal, carefully lift it up one side, remove the, the tie bar, and slowly set it back down. And that is how we move sculpture by sliding at the Walters Art Museum.